Hello and welcome to another general vlog video. Today we're going to do a cold start, a first time start, if it'll start, of a Craftsman Eager 1. Um, it's a chipper vac, it's a 5.0 horsepower, 5 horsepower. Uh, it chips, it vacuums, leaves, it has a hose, as you can see that big long hose right there and uh it does a little bit of everything so it does not mow it this is for leaves and small limbs so let me get over here where you guys can see my beautiful face and i'll kind of explain a few things to you um there's a plate underneath here you can take it off and run it like you would a lawnmower and it picks up all the leaves and then i do believe it mulches them and then puts them into the bagger it may or may not mulch them, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that it does, I have to check in on that. And then you can undo this, put that long hose on there, get them all out of your flower gardens or off the edge of your house or whatever. And then if you have small limbs, very small, about the size of that, you can put them right down in there. And it brings it over here and mulches it. So let me get over here where you guys can see me. And I'll give you kind of what I was told about it is that it set up underneath the guy's workbench for years, like five, six, seven, eight years. And when he went to try to start it, now mind you, he's nine, probably 90 years old. He said he couldn't get it to start. He looked and it had water in the gas. How it would get water in the gas inside of a garage up underneath a workbench, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not even sure if he knew what he was talking about or knew what he was doing. I pulled on it a couple times. It would not fire at all. So I want to go over a few things, a little safety, a few safety things that I always check beforehand. Make sure it's got oil in it, make sure the plug looks decent. Do all that first. So I'll do a little bit of that on camera. I won't bore you completely. And then once we get it running good and I'm satisfied with it, then we're going to clean it all up and we're just going to get rid of it because I have no, no need for it. So let's go with that. So a few of the things that I like to do, let's get these two hose here out of the way. One of the things that I like to do is try to get as many of the leaves off of it as I can there. Uh, take this off. Take the plug out. We'll check the condition of the plug. Well, the plug looks pretty healthy. It's not all nasty or dirty. Matter of fact, I don't even think for an initial start, I don't even think I'm going to clean that plug. Um, the plug is a J19LM. I don't know if I have one of those in stock or not. But if I do, of course, I'll put a new plug in it. If I don't, you know, I'll clean it all up. So there that is. Then over here we have the stop, turtle, and rabbit. Fast, slow, and off. Okay. And let's check the gas. What gas was on there? Tight? Um, oh, it didn't hardly have any gas in it whatsoever. Hmm. The gas that's in there, I bet, smells like it might have stable in it or something. It, it has something in it. So we'll deal with that here in just a second. And then pull this air filter off. Kind of look at it a little bit. Yeah, it's not in the best shape in the world. We'll blow that out. Uh, once again, I can do all that after I do my initial start if I'm smart enough to, uh, uh, there we go, get it back on there. Let's see, this is probably how you take this off. I think I'm going to just going to kind of lay that bag back a little bit. Now I do see a lot of moisture down in that part. It does not smell like gas. There's no leaves laying in it. But that is kind of uh, strange, I think. I'm not real familiar with these machines, but they're all basically, you know, if it's got a motor, it's got a motor. 
So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'd like to know more about this gas that's in here. So let me see what I can find. That's the only thing I could find with this whole thing. It had oil in it. So we'll just kind of try to look at it as it comes out. Uh, there's not even enough in there. It may not even come out. Yeah, it's, it's not even wanting to come out. Nope. There's not enough in there for it to come out. So let me grab some gas. Yeah, I know. My gas is in a kerosene can. I'm very well aware of that. I don't use kerosene. I needed a good garage gas can. Boy, that was messy, wasn't it? Now, I must admit <coughs> that I did see... I don't know if you guys can hear me when I walk off like that. But I must admit, I did see some water droplets. You know how water looks like when it mixes with oil or gas? Uh, it looked more of an oil type substance. It may have been something that he had in there just to dry up the gas, get the water out of the gas. It's going to want to wipe it down a little bit. It is a composite type body, like a fiberglass body. It doesn't weigh hardly nothing. <coughs> The front tires are adjustable. Um, oh, it looks like maybe this can also be a blower. I bet from the front here, it looks like you can turn the handlebars this way and make it a blower. Never thought about that. That, that could be pretty handy for somebody. So see, this is why I like to go over these things, because you can learn. Now we have a primer ball. Now, before I even touch that primer ball, I'm going to grab some WD-40 and spray the primer ball down really, really, really good. And then just kind of rub it in a little bit. I know this doesn't make much sense to a lot of people, but rubber gets hard over the years. And I just find that if I don't do this, chances are I'm going to spring some type of a air leak or a gas leak in that. So I did that. Let's see if we can hear it. And it's not the type of primer ball that actually gets hard. It's just literally like a shot primer. It just shoots a couple things in there. I could take the breather back off and look in there and see... But let's just uh, let's put her on full blast. The muffler looks in great shape. It doesn't look like it's been used much at all. It says one pull start. Well, we know better than that. The last thing that I want to do before I try to start it is check the oil. Very important because you don't want to start something that has no or low oil. And it looks like I need to add to this one. Yes, I need to add. It looks very clean. So in these, I just use an Ace brand uh, SAE 30. And I'm going to bring it up to full. Because it doesn't look like I'm going to need to do an oil change in this. I don't know how much it's going to take to get full. It's got a long tube. So once I put it in, I just kind of tap the tube a little bit. Get it on down in there. It's very important that you guys check the oil before you try to cold start anything, even if it's your own equipment, because accidents can happen. And I'm sure the last thing that you want to do is start it up and it blow up or lock up. 
because you didn't check the oil. A five second job, one of these, uh, it don't even take one full one to even do a full oil change. There are a couple bucks, three or four bucks, pick up a couple, throw them in your garage, and, and always check your oil. Now I'm going to check this in again now that that's had time to go down in the tube. That looks good. And that looks like brand new clean oil. So the oil that was in there looked clean. I added clean oil on top of it. I won't say it's had an oil change, but I'll say the oil is fresh. So now that we've kind of just physically looked over it and... I guess we could verify that nothing's stuck inside of it that would cause it not to turn over the blower part. And we'll just kind of grab this down here, take this side here off, and look. And no, there is nothing hung up in there. So I'm going to leave that off. Still trying to get little pieces of dirt out of it and leaves. And let me go over here and make sure that I'm still recording. And I am. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit so it's fully in shot. And we're going to see what we come up with as far as starting it. It says one pool start, but it's been setting for a long time. Well, you don't put your foot on the front. Well, I don't like that. It don't really catch until it's come out quite a bit. Well, I do see now down here it says important. <coughs> Correctly positioning the handlebars before starting. Blower position would be all the way back to here, and vacuum position would be this way. This says that it includes deflector, which I don't know if that's this, or if there's something else that's supposed to be there. I bet there's another feature, and it might be that. Yeah, I bet it is. You take the bag off of that, and that's your deflector. So... That might be pretty neat. So I'm going to just keep pumping this up here just a little bit. I wish it, it pulled closer to the beginning. It may never have. Okay. Yeah. See, to me, it's a bad design. Uh, yeah, I just screwed up. <laughs> if that had been a lawnmower and it started, I could have got hurt. But you really can't put your feet, foot here because it goes forward. So you really have no place to put your foot to stable it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this design at all. Of course, with me and flip-flops doesn't help much either. I just feel like I'm not getting enough oomph. I'm trying to figure out where's the best way to go from here. <clears throat> I think I'm going to look and see if that is squirting gas in there. I don't even know if I can see down in that. I do see some gas coming up. It's not squirting a lot, but it is squirting a little. So let's see what we got now. Alright, next thing we're going to do is check the spark. <coughs> I still feel like if I could get one or two good pulls on it, it'd start. But,
Let's check the whole spark situation. I'm not seeing any spark. None whatsoever. And I don't like that. Why, that has to keep coming out like that. I'm not seeing any spark. So I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to take these two screws off right here. And see if I can't get this thing to start catching when it first pulls out. But yeah, we're not getting any spark whatsoever. Hmm. That really concerns me. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I just seen a spark. I can't tell if I'm seeing spark or not. <laughs> it's too daylight out here. I don't know. Let me get off of here. Let me put it on pause for a minute. I done told you that's all I was going to do. Just take that top off. See if I can't get it to start pulling faster than it does. And then we'll see from there. Okay, we're back. I had to readjust the camera a little bit. It's really weird what you learn working on these things. Something so simple. And I'll get to that here in just a second. So basically what happened was... I wasn't getting any spark, which you knew. you seen that. And this thing here, now, if you pull it hard, it starts right away. And if you pull it slow, it starts right away. A little bit, you know, about a 3 or 4 inch... But that's doable. And all I did was took these two screws out, which are a quarter inch, popped it off. There's a little metal plate in there that allows these little dog ears to come out. <coughs> and I just sprayed some uh, WD-40. Good old, uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Would love to be WD-40 if you're having to watch this. Sponsor me. I go through a lot of WD-40. Uh, if there's another brand out there that thinks that they're better, 3-in-1 oil or anything else, there's another one, I just can't think of the name, uh, send it to me. I'll try it. I'll do an honest review. I do like this little flex hose, though. This is pretty cool. Uh, and you can go down and get a full spray. I'm not doing a product review on them, just saying. So anyways, I got that fixed, and I kept trying to pull it, and I couldn't see any spark. So I pulled it in the shop. Turned all the lights out, shut the door, pulled it seven or eight times. I didn't see no spark. I come out here, was getting ready to take this off. Thinking that maybe some moisture got down inside or something. So I, I popped the gas tank off, which is as simple as that. It, it just has two little ears that it fits in. So I was able to do that. Make sure that gets down in there good. And upon doing that, I see this little thing back here which I'm not going to bring you around yet. We will on a final walkthrough of it. So basically, this has to be on there. There's a metal piece that goes down in here. There's two wires that run to it, and apparently it makes a ground. And without that, it will not run. So that's what that is. So I put it back on, and even out here, I pulled it. I'll pull it now. And the icy spark. And, ooh, that muffler's hot. That's almost like somebody's already pre-run this thing to check it now. I'm just joking. I did not. Look at this. I, I, can, I, I can put any part of my body on it. It's ice cold. I ain't even put the plug back in yet. I don't know why I was thinking I could make you think I started it when I ain't put the plug back in. So, anyways, I got a feeling. Fresh gas. The gas tank was empty with the exceptions of just a little bit. And I have some dry gas in there. Uh, additive that I'm going to drop a little bit in it. Not a whole lot. You guys got to remember that when you're working on something like this, this has like a quarter of a tank, a quarter of a gallon of a tank on it. I don't know the exact capacity of it, but that's what I'm assuming. And you don't want to use a whole thing of dry gas in it. You know, if that's meant for a whole car that's got 22 gallons, 18 gallons, 16 gallons, whatever. 
to just put just a teaspoon in there. So, all right, I still don't like the way that you gotta start this, but I'm gonna put my hand here and go like that. Oh, wow, I was really hoping it would start. Okay, but it died, and I tried to go that way thinking it was choked, but it wasn't. So let's try that again. off where I can at least choke it a little bit by hand and it may just have some water down in the bowl that'd be the next thing I do is take bowl off well maybe this thing's designed where it won't run without that I doubt that but who knows Actually, go go ahead and take that bowl off and see if there's any water in the bottom of it. See just what I can see. I think that's like a 10 millimeter. There, there's some wetness on the bottom, but it, it smells like WD-40, and I think it's where I sprayed this. So let me do that. I'm gonna do that off camera. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're to a 21 minute video, so let me do it off camera. All right, I'm going to try to show you what I found. I'm, I'm going to try to... I don't know if you can see that or not. But you can see that water laying in the bottom there. A lot of water. I'm trying to get it to focus correctly. But yeah, there, there's a lot of water in there. A lot of gunk. So we're going to clean all that up. And... See if we can't get her running a little bit better. Clean the bottom of the carburetor up. Hopefully I don't have to take the carburetor off. The seal still looks good. I take it off and show you guys, but my hands are all full of gas and I don't want to touch the camera. So let me do this real quick and we'll get you right back on here. Okay, let me explain to you what I did. I dropped the bottom of the bow off. I showed you guys the best of my ability. How bad it was. I can't take my camera off the tripod because my hands were all gassy. And I don't want to screw up the screen on my camera or anything. So, it was pretty bad. I cleaned it out. Uh, you know, you just use carburetor cleaner, clean that. Clean the bottom of the carburetor bowl, the float and everything off itself. And clean out the bottom jet. Try to clean out the middle jet. You know, just all the best that you can put it all back together and we're going to see if it'll start now have I already tried it yes I did because the bowl was completely empty I wanted to fill up it started about the third pole so now we're going to hope you know that it starts pretty quick out and clean it extremely well well you know what before I do that I think we ought to test it so give me a second to get my tools and stuff picked up and we'll test this thing okay on this testing proportion you can see some leaves in front of it I'm going to run over those and then I think I'm going to check the chipper and we'll go from there so the first thing that I noticed that I would want to do is go down on these tires. Well, maybe not. So 
So let's see how it does just the way it sets. So next, I think we're going to put this little thing back on. Let me try to uh, go ahead and get some things set up here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this on camera. If this video runs a little long, I'm sorry. I'll explain all that here in a little bit. Because we still have to clean it. There we go. And this says to go this way to remove. So I can see little tangs on this. Which if the front works, there's no sense that this here shouldn't work. But, you know, if I'm going to sell it, I'd like to know for a fact that it works. So excuse me while I pick up some leads. Okay, so we got a little bit of stuff of leaves here. I'm gonna walk behind the camera and see what you can see right here. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna put these about right here. Move this black lid. And I'll start it up again, then we'll take this hose, see if it picks up, and that's about as far as my assessment of it needs to go. We can see it picked them up, but I also have water coming out of the handle. But I'm sitting here trying to clean it out of there, and I shouldn't because I'm getting ready to uh, power wash it off. So all in all, I mean, it was easy to fix. It has good pickup power, it does chip limbs, and it's starting really good now, and it's idling correctly. Uh, the bag looks like it's blowing up. Uh, the zipper is a little hard to work on it, so what I'll do is once I power wash it, I'll let it all dry, and I'll come out here with a bar of soap, and I'll go over that zipper really well. So I'm going to pause you once again, and... Get the power washer all set up, and I'll power wash it, and then I'll bring you back at the end, <coughs> and we'll try to wrap this video up and try to only have a 30-minute video. Okay, and there we go. It's all clean. It's clean enough, at least. And as you can see, it, it come pretty clean. There's still a few little things that'll come off when I, I... I don't know if I'm going to blow dry it with the air compressor or if I'm going to just let it dry naturally but there it is even got the tube the hose all cleaned up uh, it's got some water drops on it I probably wipe some of those off the motor get pictures taken of it and get it ready to I got that and that swing back there and a couple of them bicycles got to go uh, yeah I just got to get get start getting things cleaned up I mean I live in a trailer park for God's sakes and I'm starting to look like typical trailer trash. Uh, I can't help it. I'm a hoarder. Excuse me. I tell you what. If I don't stop sniffling like that, people going to think I really belong in a trailer park, if you know what I mean. Uh, I, just, I just got over three days of the flu. 
not a cold. I had a full blown flu. And yesterday I thought I was good, but later on as the evening progressed, I started getting worse again. Today I'm not getting worse. I'm just, it's like I've plateaued at, you know, the runny nose, the little bit of a sore throat, not too bad on the sore throat. I almost hate to even mention that. Uh, sorry, I was throwing some stuff away, but yeah, I, it's, it's been bad. I just, <coughs> a friend of mine had it, uh, my gosh, she couldn't even get out of bed or anything and it, she had it worse than I did, but I'm getting over it. But unfortunately I didn't get to see the boys Monday like I wanted to because I was in bed, well, I was actually on the couch, and I, I couldn't hardly even move. And, yeah, the boys could have sat there and kept me company, but I didn't want to get them sick, so I just opted not to see them. And then they wanted to see me Tuesday, and I, I felt still pretty bad yesterday. And then today, you know, I still got the runny nose and, and a little bit of a cough and a, a little bit of a sore throat, and... Yeah, I just, I don't want to get my boys sick. So tomorrow's their, their day to come over. So tomorrow, I'm going to try to make up for it somehow. Uh, I don't know exactly how yet, but I will make up for it. So I, guess, I see I didn't get that back rim as clean as I wanted to. And here, look at look here. I'm going to go over this 30-minute threshold. We're already 31, 88 minutes. I don't, I know there's, I think I might start splitting these videos up into two. Let me explain to you really quick why. I promise we'll get out of here by 35 minutes. Um, I personally watch a YouTuber. His name is Musty1, M-U-S-T-I-E-1. He does a lot of this stuff. But he goes into depth and details, almost like a teaching mode, of what he's doing. And, but sometimes his videos are over an hour long, well over an hour long. And even though I don't have ADHD, I have a hard time concentrating on something this monotonous for that length of time. And we do live in an ADHD society. I think that's what it's called where they can't, their attention spans are short. So I try to keep all my videos to about 15 minutes. So I may end up starting to do these two videos at a time. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But that, that's why I didn't like keep you right on when I was trying to do certain things. The little things like taking that pull starter off and spraying it with lube. I guess I'm not trying to teach you how to do stuff like that. I'm just trying to show you how to get one and you know, the, the primary things to do. Check the oil, check the gas, check the breather, check the spark plug. You know, that's before you ever start any piece of equipment. You honestly should do it every time you're getting ready to mow, even if it's once a week. At least check that oil. So, but anyways, I'm not here to preach at you. I'm here to teach you a little bit and give you guys a little bit of hands-on how to do this. So I'd like to thank you, and I'm going to start sounding like Musty now. I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me and getting a little greasy and figuring something out. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Look, I learned how to do that. Ain't that pretty cool? <laughs> Nobody else in the world can do that, can they? Yeah, right. Everybody can do it. But anyways, um, please, please, please subscribe. We have an awesome channel here, uh, my boys and I do, and they're on it some, and they're not on it some, and a lot of it's about stuff that I get into, but either or, please subscribe. I think you guys will really appreciate our channel. Uh, we do so many odd things, and fun things, and weird things, and different things, and Anywhere from fixing lawnmowers and, and these kind of things to building four-wheelers to working on dirt bikes to riding them to playing to fishing to golfing to swimming to everything. We do everything in general. So now I'm going to get out of here. i got 30 seconds to say my goodbyes. I hope you guys have a great day, uh, even better tomorrow, and an awesome night. And we will see you on the next video. 15 seconds to spare.